What if one day of work could bring you passive income in perpetuity? Don't worry, I'm not talking about a get rich quick scheme or an MLM pitch. I'm talking about evergreen content. Evergreen content can bring you a steady flow of new traffic and income for years after you hit publish. But what is evergreen content and why is it so valuable? Let's get into it. Evergreen content isn't determined by how long it lives online, but by the longevity of its relevance. Could a reader stumble across this years from now and still find it relevant? Does the overall value and message stand the test of time? That's evergreen content. This video, evergreen. So why is it valuable? Let's start with traffic. Evergreen content can be great for traffic, especially if you optimize it with search engine friendly keywords. To give you an example, one of my top posts of all time is about how to tie a headscarf. It's over a decade old and it's still a top referral today. Now, traffic doesn't just bring new eyes to your blog, it can also bring in revenue through affiliate links and ad placement. Now, I do recommend doing both, but you need to keep the distractions to a minimum. So no automatic video plays, no pop-ups, nothing too distracting that will make people not wanna come back. But if done properly, it can bring you in a lot of money over time and it keeps working for you long after you've put the work into it. It's also great for reaching and retaining a new audience. And you may notice that I differentiated between reaching a new audience and retaining a new audience, and that's because your SEO-friendly evergreen content can lure them in, but you have to make them stay. So this is a great opportunity to demonstrate why they should become a part of your audience by using internal links to direct them to other blog posts that they might be interested in. You just wanna get them to stick around as long as possible, and I'll get a little bit more into that, but in the meantime, let's talk about styles of evergreen content. Some examples of evergreen content are listicles, resources, how-tos and tutorials, and frequently asked questions. Listicles should be organized, easy to read, and have a clear takeaway for your reader. Some examples of posts that I have done that would fall into the listicle category are tips for traveling with your dog, eight classic feel-good movies, and my top skincare products. And a good way to brainstorm for listicle ideas is just write top five blank or tips for blank and fill in those blanks and get a little more specific from there. Resources are another great option. Whether it's a makeup swatch resource or a travel destination review or a deep dive into the pros and cons of online therapy, a resource should give your reader a little more insight into the subject at hand. All right, let me give you an example. When you Google Smashbox always on matte liquid lipstick swatches, say that 10 times fast, <laughs> my post will come up at the top right underneath Sephora and Smashbox, which is really good. So the amount of traffic and revenue that that post has brought me over the years was well worth the super dry, irritated lips that I got from swatching 20 long lasting lipsticks. So the reason why that post is so successful is because it's a helpful resource for anyone who is shopping online for that particular liquid lipstick brand and wants to see swatches of those colors on a real person. And a post like my better help experience will be helpful for anyone who is looking for the pros and cons of online therapy. And it's a very honest, unbiased review. And then there's instructional how to's and tutorials. So tutorials, especially beginner friendly, easy to follow ones like my headscarf tutorial or how to style bangs or how to style a messy bun are great examples of evergreen content that also answer questions from my community. So this is great because not only are you getting a new audience, hopefully in the long run, but you're also pleasing your current audience because you're answering the questions that they're always asking, which brings me to frequently asked questions. So for frequently asked questions, just read the room because that's going to give you the best post ideas. If you're, if you're getting asked the same question over and over and over, just make it into a post. So that's how I came up with the post. My favorite red lipsticks, my favorite rosy lipsticks, the lipsticks you're always asking me about, and my favorite lashes, because those are the questions I get every single day. So instead of answering it 20 times a day, now I have posts that I can direct my audience to 
to answer the questions and get traffic in the process. Okay, now we have established what evergreen content is. So now let's talk about what it is not. Starting with current events. So current events are current, which means they're happening right now, which means that people are generally not looking to very old resources to find out what's happening today. So obviously that would not be evergreen. Something uh. like that, you would be turning to the news or something that's updated frequently like Twitter. And that doesn't mean that it's a content style that you should not be doing. It just means it's not evergreen. Now for trend-based content, think of it this way. Evergreen content is that heirloom piece in your wardrobe that you keep for years to come and you always reach for. And non-evergreen content is that trendier, maybe even fast fashion statement piece in your wardrobe that you want right now. And it's kind of fun, but you probably won't keep it when you clean out your closet in even a couple months, maybe a year from now. And that doesn't mean you should not do trend-based content. It can be fun, it's of this moment, it can be a short-term traffic earner, but in terms of looking for evergreen content, think in terms of classics versus trends. Now, do I regret my days of high-low skirts and pork pie hats? Yes, actually I do, <laughs> I do. But it's also a part of my brand to experiment with fashion and I document my style throughout the ages. So in that case, I guess I don't really regret posting about it, but is it evergreen? Absolutely not. I can't imagine that anyone is posting those pictures as style inspiration, but you know, maybe when that style comes back around again. And then finally, anything too date specific or time sensitive is not evergreen. So shopping guides where those products will sell out and those links will become obsolete or something with an expiration date like a Black Friday sales roundup where obviously those won't be relevant once the sale is over. Those are not evergreen. They have immediate value, but when you're planning out evergreen posts, you should think in terms of long-term value and relevance. My one exception to the date specific rule is evergreen holiday content. Now, some may argue this is not truly evergreen because it's specific to a certain time of year, but posts like my Santa hat tutorial or all of my Halloween costume ideas can be referenced for years to come. And in fact, some of my Halloween content is popular all year round. Here are some tips for maintaining your evergreen content. Evergreen content requires minimal maintenance. Once you hit publish, most of the work is done. But if you want to maximize its success, just do a little bit of upkeep now and then. First, go through your old posts and link to your new posts. If an old post from a decade ago is still bringing you traffic, that's great. And it's also an opportunity to direct them to new posts. So link to some new posts within, or you can revamp that post idea and link to the new version in that old post. For example, that headscarf tutorial I'm always talking about, I took that opportunity to make a new version with three different ways to wear it, and I made a video, and I linked that new post in the old one. So now anytime somebody comes and finds me through that 10-year-old post, they see that there's a new version and they can click through and watch that and find more ways to wear it. Now, this does not have to be the same exact topic, so just find some relevant posts to link to and give them a reason to become a regular follower. Another important thing to do is refresh your affiliate links and fix any broken links. If somebody goes through one of your evergreen posts and they click on an affiliate link and they try to buy the product and it's no longer available, you're missing out on revenue. So go back through, make sure that those products are still available or replace them with something that is available and make that money. Sometimes I like to update my evergreen content with new info as I have it. So I'll go through my old tutorials and I'll update with new techniques, new product recommendations, or new insights into something I have more experience with now, because evergreen doesn't mean it can't evolve. As times change, so do our techniques, so do our opinions, and that's okay. So just go back through it and then also tip, change the publish date because then it doesn't look like it's an old resource to new readers. The last thing I do is feature my most popular posts right on the main page of my blog. 
And those are highlighted automatically according to the month's trend, so I really don't have to do anything. And it gives new and old readers alike an easily clickable destination to check out. And it also helps me plan out future posts because it shows me what is performing the best. Now remember, listicles, resources, how-tos and tutorials, and frequently asked questions are all great examples of evergreen content. What it's not, is current events, trend-based topics, or anything too time-sensitive. And while evergreen content pretty much does all the work for you once you hit publish, you do need to do a little bit of maintenance every now and then just to make sure it has optimal success. I will be back soon with more creator insights, so make sure you subscribe to this channel and check back for more. Bye.